Lord, give you another directive. Come on, open up those mouths and release that sound that is wet. Woo! do 
Come on, let's see. Oh, we're 
Come on, that's it. Offer it to him. Woo! Come on, if you know him, the language ain't hard. Come on. If you know him, the language is not hard. Woo! If you know him, woo, ha, ha, ha. the language is not hard to give. Woo, ha. Oh. Come on, that's it. Oh. We love on you. Come on, love on him with your affection. With your affection. My adoration My affection Come on, that's it, love on him My adoration Sit love on him. My focus is on you, God. Ooh. Our focus is on you, God. We need you like we never need you before. And we don't just need you because of what we want, God. We need you so you can equip us to be the solutions. So you can equip us with the power. So you can equip us to change a generation. So you can equip us to break the curses. We don't just want it for ourselves. This adoration is not selfish. I seek you because I know that you provide the answers needed for a time such as this. Oh, it's not about my personal needs anymore. It's about snatching a generation out of the belly of hell. It's about redeeming the United States of America. Come on. I don't praise them for me. I praise them to make me the solution that the earth needs for such a time as this. Oh, I feel them. We're not gathered here just to support, but I'm gathered here so he can launch me forth as an arrow of deliverance. So he can launch me forth as an arrow of deliverance in my region, in my city, in my bloodline. Send me as the deliverer. Oh, launch me forth. That's why I'm here. Oh, launch me forth. Make me a solution in the earth. As an arrow, as an arrow, as an arrow. Of deliverance, my nation needs me, my city needs me, my children needs me, my bloodline needs me, and I'm here to be lost, lost as an answer, as a solution, as an example, as a performance. I'm sent forth, oh my God, oh, 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 
break sickness and disease. Oh, he left it by way of his spirit. Oh, call the Holy Ghost, the spirit that enables me and gives me exus and dunamis power that gives me authority and power to execute. Oh, I'm not a normal Christian, but I'm an ambassador. Oh, I'm an ambassador. I'm a representation in the earth of the kingdom of God. Come on, lift your voice. Oh, I feel, I feel the launching point. That's it, I see a leap. Open up your mouth. It's a launching form tonight. It's a sending form. Oh, a launching form. A sending form. A launching form to overthrow every power. To overthrow every system of evil. To overthrow every scheme and plan of the enemy. Come on, you ought to say, wow. Oh, I came to overthrow and to overpower every other kingdom, none of his kingdom. Open your mouth. Oh, yes. I know it's coming by God, but I don't just come to cover my car. I'm not a fan. Come on, I didn't come in to be a fan. But what I came here is to be imparted into by the woman of God that came with an assignment to change a generation. This is not the place for being a fan. Wow! Oh, this is the place where we get equipped to do the work. Oh, this is not about celebrity status. This is not about being seen. But what you came into tonight is a room that will send you for. I sense ascending. I sense ascending. I sense ascending. Shout! Lift your voice all over this place. I want to be an arrow. I want to be an arrow. Come on. I want to be an arrow. 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 Send me. Send me forth. Send me forth, God. Send us forth, send us forth, God. Send us forth, send us forth, God. Give him a shout. I'm your error of deliverance. Shoot me forth in the earth. I'm your 
right on the mark. Bullseye, bullseye. Ooh. Right on the mark, right on the mark. Shoot us more than Right on the mark, right on the mark. Oh, right on the mark, right on the mark. Ooh. Right on the mark, right on the mark. Shoot me far to hit the target. Ooh. So that that kingdom of darkness will collapse. The kingdom of darkness will collapse. Shoot me for the kingdom of darkness will collapse. The kingdom of darkness will collapse. Shoot me for the kingdom of darkness will collapse. Hey, the kingdom of darkness will collapse. Hey, the kingdom of darkness will collapse. The kingdom of darkness will collapse. Hey, the kingdom of darkness will collapse. Hey, the kingdom of darkness will collapse. The kingdom of darkness will collapse. Oh, the kingdom of darkness, oh Lord, will shoot me forth, 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 shoot me forth. Show me part, show me part, show me part, show me part, and the kingdom of darkness will collapse. Show me part, 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 and the kingdom of darkness will collapse. The kingdom of darkness will collapse. Come on, sing that. Three, how 
me the ever, Lord. Oh, not one time, not two times, not three times. But how many ever, how many, how many ever you launch me? How many ever you launch me to? How many ever you send me? How many ever you launch me to? It defeats the enemy, oh, defeats the enemy, oh, defeats the enemy, oh, defeats the enemy. Shoot me forth until he collapses, or oh, shoot me forth until he collapses, or oh, shoot me forth until he collapses, or oh, shoot us forth until he collapses. Shoot us forth until it's defeated. Shoot us forth. Shoot me forth until it's defeated. Shoot me forth until it's defeated. Say, shoot me forth until. Shoot me forth. Shoot me forth until. Shoot me forth. Until just the truth, shoot me forth, shoot me, shoot me forth. Until, shoot me forth. Until it's, shoot me forth. Until, sing it again. Shoot me, till I wanna see you come down. Hey, shoot me forth. Until. Shoot me far. Stay out of sight. Shoot me far until it's defeated. Shoot me far until it's defeated. Shoot me far until it's defeated. Shoot me far until it now shout until it comes out. 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 Until until it comes out. 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 Until it comes down. Until it comes down. Until that principality. Until that idol. Until they go. Until that tower of pale. Until. Until. Until sickness. Until infirmity, until, until bondage, until infliction, until, until, come on, until, 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 until it breaks, until it lifts, until it shatters, until, until. Until, until it breaks, until it devours, until it collapses. I see, I see, I see, I see, I see everything that has been erected. I see it crumbling. I see the power of God. Oh, knocking it over. I see the head shattering to pieces. I see the body becoming no more. I see it. I see. See it. Oh, until it falls. Until it breaks. Shoot me forth until it's no more. Not one score, not two times, not three times, but until my enemy is no more. 
shoot me forth until it becomes non-existent. Shoot me forth till there is no more residue. Shoot me forth. I want to see it come down. I want to see it in my tank come to collapse. I want to see it shatter. I want to see it come to an end. Shoot me forth. Not one time. Not two times. Not three times. But until my enemies are defeated. Come on. Until my enemies are defeated. Oh. Until my enemies are defeated. Oh, that's it. Woo. Come on, it's already happening. Come on. Come on, it's already happening. Woo. Woo. Come on. Until the enemy of our God becomes no more until every system that has been set up to come against the body of Christ come on you got to fight this season come on no more patty cake Christianity where is your strength where is your might where is your intercession where is your prayer come on oh! until every enemy of my God is overthrown until every system of darkness is overthrown every agenda against our children is overthrown every agenda every agenda against marriages is overthrown every agenda against the body of Christ is overthrown every agenda with an assignment to mute our voices in this hour you better cry loud and spare not lift your eyes come on come on you better cry out you better cry out you better cry out we don't need any more instruction you got all that word in you. Come on. Now put it to use in this building. Come on. No more Muslim people. Come on. Let there be a sound. Bride of Christ arising. She arises with power. She arises with authority. She arises she arises she arises let the body of Christ lift your eyes yeah. come on every voice in this place come on the spirit of intercession filling this room come on wow someone call it pale upon the book or tear let us some man of a copia pale upon to put a big care come on come on pray in the holy ghost oh my god come on Come on, pray. Come on, let's pray. Come on. Hey. 
you tonight. Tonight we grab hold. We grab hold of the assignment in the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you that tonight you empower us with your spirit, by your spirit. It is through your spirit. Oh, Father, tonight we pray. Oh, Father, let the spirit of intercession Oh, begin to fill this room tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Let your church arise in the name of Jesus. Father, fill our mouth with your language. Fill our mouths with your words. Father, we thank you for a generation that is arising. That even as your word declares that you give us the tongue of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Father, I'm thinking that even tonight, your body, your bride, arises in its beauty, arises in its splendor, arises in its authority, arises in its strength, arises in its might, in the name of Jesus. Come on, pray. Oh, Father, we think that tonight, oh God, as a gathered body of people in this building in Atlanta, Georgia, Father, we thank you that tonight, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that the power of God arrests every idol. It overthrows every construct, every system, every agenda, in the name of Jesus, that seeks to devour, Lord, your people, oh God, in this hour. But Father, in Jesus' name, Father, we stand, we stand, we stand, we stand as your representation. We stand as your ecclesia. We stand as your saints. We stand as the sons of God. We stand as those that sit and stand at the right hand of God in the name of Jesus. For your word declares that we are seated in heavenly places so father we thank you that tonight we do not flow oh god we do not move nor pray from a place of victimization but god we pray tonight oh yes let your power overthrow every kingdom that is not of your kingdom overthrow every system of perversion Every system, Lord, that seeks to pervert our children, that seeks to pervert our sons and our daughters. Oh, yes, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father, we pray tonight oh, that the church, we cry out. Come on. We cry out. Come on, pray. Pray for your children. Come on. Pray. Come on, in the name of Jesus. Come on, our babies. In the name of Jesus. Come on, pray. Pray for your children. Pray for your grandchildren. Pray for your seed and your seed to come. Come on, we declare tonight that the assignment of the enemy would not touch our generation, would not touch our babies, would not touch our young people, would not touch our, oh God, our men and women of God. In the name of Jesus, Father, we pray tonight that our children is covered under the blood. Father, we thank you tonight in the name of Jesus that every agenda of hell, that every assignment that seeks to devour them, that seeks to pull them in, that seeks to draw them in. Father, we thank you that tonight you reveal the plans and the purposes of our enemy. And tonight we declare, oh God, that you keep our children from molestation, that you keep our children from rape, that you keep our children from being victims of murder. In the name of Jesus, oh Father, we declare tonight that you are causing even a generation to arise, arise in power. We think that our children shall prophesy and our children shall dream and our children shall walk in the power of the Holy Ghost and our children would not be bound by the spirit of fear but we declare tonight let the boldness of God even this boldness that the people of God prayed in the book of Acts they said give unto us bold 
boldness. Father, we thank you for boldness that will rest upon our generation in the name of Jesus Christ, that they will be bold, that they will be bold, that they will not question their gender, that they will not question in the name of Jesus who created them, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, I'm thinking that tonight, you overthrow, 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 you overthrow every plan. Oh yes, come on, pray for them. Pray over your babies. Come on, pray over, pray over them now in the name of Jesus Christ. We think that they shall be reared in the things of God, that they shall be reared in the word of God, that they shall be reared, oh God, in the giftings of God, that they will not be stagnant in the name of Jesus, but they shall be thrust and forth even in this hour, oh God, in Jesus' name, come on, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, now let the people of God cry out. Father who will never ever fail me. Jesus is my Father. He will never ever fail me. Rock of ages never ever fail. Me. I have a Father who has never ever failed me. I have a father who has never ever failed me. Jesus is my father. He has never ever failed me. He's the rock of ages. He will never ever fail. Everybody sing. I have a father who has never ever failed me. I have a father who has never ever failed me. Jesus is my father. He has never ever failed me. He's the rock of ages. He has never ever failed. Now the reason this song is powerful is because uh, the reason I'm able to stand on everybody's neck the reason I'm fighting a good fight of faith over on Facebook, the reason I'm able to add more to it before I take it away is because I know who my father is. The reason you're not able to intimidate me with your threats, the reason I don't care about your voodoo or hoodoo or juju, the reason I don't care about nothing y'all got going on if it's not in the word of God is because I know who my father is. The reason I don't care about people that have more money than me, the reason I don't care about celebrities that have more fame than me, the reason I don't care about false prophets that think they know more than me is because I'm the one with the real father. Everybody else bows down to the father of all lies, but I've... It's very important to get a revelation of who your father is. Whenever you go into worship, you don't even have to sing hard, kill the enemy. You don't have to do all that. 
All you need to do in worship is to go back in there and just remind yourself, anytime I'm going to war with the enemy, anytime I'm going to war with the world, anytime I just sing, I have a father who has never, ever failed. I have a father who will never, ever fail me. Jesus is my father. He has never, ever failed me. He's the rock of ages. He will never, ever fail Do you? Can you imagine the strength I get, the power I get, the godly confidence I get? As a little girl, who in their right mind thinks that a little girl who serves a big God, my father gonna let you beat me up? Who in their right mind think that I'm not sitting home with two pigtails in my head saying, and I got a father. And my daddy's not behind me roaring. I'm, my roar might be light. But I have a lion. That every time I open up my mouth with my light roar, I got the lion of the tribe of Judah backing me up. It's like when you see in the movies, the little, the little one is screaming and then you got the enemies backing up and they think that they did something. But then you see the father behind them, that's behind them pacing back and forth like, try it. And a lot of us, if I could get you to understand this while you're under my tutelage for this season of your life, is that most of us serve the God who our father was. And a lot of people, unfortunately, I do a lot of deliverances and majority of those deliverances, their fathers raped them. Full penetration for years. Some people want to be free and some people have fallen in their love with their fathers. It's very hard to get them free from that. But my point is, if you served, if you had an abusive natural father, you tend to jump every time you're talking to God because you're always in condemnation because you're always being abused or so you think. It's very illogical. If you served a father who walked out on you and abandoned you, well, for a long time, you no more, normally served the God who always leaves and always forsakes you. If you serve, if you had a natural father that was always rejecting you, then when you go to God in prayer, you find that he's always rejecting you. It's not real, it's illogical, but that's your experience. And when that's your experience and you don't have a God that you can stand 10 feet down, 10 toes down and say, my God, my daddy got my back. It's very hard for you to do the work. It's very hard for you to be sent out like a polished arrow. It's very hard for you to go into the regions and the nations and speak thus what saith the Lord, knowing that everybody going to turn their back on you. It's very hard to do the work of ministry when you're not positive that your father has your back. So I want to sing this again, but I want you to have a revelation that you're singing it. I don't care what battle you're looking at right now. It could be the worst of the worst. I don't care what it is. Remember, when we sing worship, we don't focus on the issue. We, we focus on God. When you take your eye off of the problem, that's why we made a vow years ago that we would worship God before we worried. If you forgot that vow, I want you to revow yourself to God. God, before I worry, I promise to you, I'll worship first. If you get bad news, if you get anything that you don't want, God, I make a vow to you that my first response will be to worship. Even if the tear drop before I say it out my mouth that I'm worried, I'm gonna say, I worship. Just make revow yourself, rededicate yourself to that vow. But I want to sing that song again a few more times because I want you to have a revelation that as long as your father has your back, the I am that I am, as long as your father has your back, Jehovah Nissi, as long as he has your back, Jehovah Mekadesh, as long as your father, you know, your father is so many things. He's literally a provider for you. As long as your provider has your back, Ain't nothing else to be worried about. As long as Jehovah Rapha has your back, it's nothing to worry about. I know that sounds crazy for those of you that feel like your prayer requests haven't gone through in a while and you're lacking faith, but as long as he has your back, 
the enemy is point. The Bible says he's like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. But do you know that he was defamed at the cross? So he's more sound. He's more, he's more sound than bite. He can't bite. He's biting you with gums. He was defamed and declawed at the cross. It doesn't stop him from roaring at you. But when he's roaring at you, you should kind of laugh and be like, you don't really, you're, you can't even cross this boundary. That's why for this cover by God, I said, put up a, a, a circle of fire around cover by God. Because I need this to be a manifestation to you that when you come to the altar of covered by God, this is Zechariah 2 in, in the flesh. He said, I'll be a wall of fire round about her. I will be a wall of fire round about you. The word fire there is a theophany. It is the wrath of God, the anger of God. That means you're standing in the middle of this fire and anybody touches you touches the wrath of God. As long as you are in as long as you went when God sent you, as long as you said what God said, they can't touch you. You are in the wrath. They, they touch you. They, they experience the anger of God. It's a supernatural fire. In verse 8, it says, and anyone who touches you touches the apple of God's eye. I have a father who will never, ever fail me. I have a father who will never ever fail me. Jesus is my father. He has never ever failed me. He's the rock of ages. He has never ever failed. One more time. I have a father who has never ever failed me. I have a father who has never ever failed me. Jehovah is my father. He has never ever failed me. He's the rock of ages. He has never ever failed me. Father, we thank you for tonight. We declare today that this is the generation that will seek your face. This is that generation, God, that will seek your face. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors. For the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord mighty in battle. The Lord. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, you everlasting doors. For the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? the Lord of hosts. I'll say it again. This is the generation of them that will seek the Lord. This is the generation of them that will seek the Lord. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. <laughs> Lift up your head, all ye gates, and be ye lifted up, you everlasting doors. For the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. Lift up your heads, all ye gates, and be ye lifted up. You everlasting doors, for the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong in battle, the Lord mighty in battle. I keep messing it up. Lift up your heads, all ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. For the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. Lift up your heads, all ye gates. And be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, for the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Ha! Lift up your head, all ye gates, and be ye lifted up, you everlasting doors, for the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts. Give him a shout of praise.
tonight is going to be a night of deliverance and instruction. The definition of deliverance. You know, the deliverance ministry got a bad rap. But do you know deliverance actually means to be rescued? Deliverance actually means to equip for war. Deliverance means to make you strong. Deliverance means to give you life or revive, which means that before revival comes, it's preceded by deliverance. Deliverance means to pull you out and to tear out. Deliverance means to prepare. But I thought it fascinating that one of the dictionary definitions, those were all the Hebrew definitions of the word deliverance, but the dictionary is a formal or authoritative utterance. It's a declaration. You know, the Bible says in Proverbs 11:9, 9, through knowledge shall the just be delivered, which means that you are bound by what you don't know. The enemy has you in bondage from what you do not know. So tonight is going to be a night of deliverance. Amen. When I say it's also going to be a night of instruction, the word instruction means a direction that someone gives or a detailed information telling you how something should be done. And I think that that's what God is doing in this hour. You all can sit if you want. I want you to text the link out to about five people that needs to hear this word. So I want to talk about the wildfires very quickly. I'm originally from Rochester, New York. Rochester, New York is three, two and a half, three, three hours from Canada, right? New York City from Rochester is about five hours away. From Canada, it's about eight hours away. The air quality right now in Rochester is about 100, 150. The air quality in New York City is about 350, 300. It's very bad, it's kind of the worst. There's a wildfire that's happening all the way in Canada. And that wildfire kind of skipped over Rochester even though they're getting some bad air quality and it's hitting New York City very badly, okay? There's no logical reason of how this thing skipped where it was closest to and got worse eight hours away. You understand what I'm saying? I saw some people say in the comments, well, they were being condescending, but they were saying, well, we're used to this in California. We're used to this in Texas. This isn't necessarily God's judgment, but isn't it likened unto a tsunami hitting New York City and somebody saying, well, we're used to that in Sri Lanka. Girl, we ain't used to the water rising up like a 20 foot wall. And Whenever you look in the Bible, God had always used natural weather, natural instances to cause chaos and judgment. What am I trying to say? I want you to be very clear. How many of you joined the three-day fast? How many of you remember that on the third day of the fast, we prayed a specific prayer point? This is why nobody should miss Cover by God fast. The God that answers by fire answers during this fast. The prayer point was, God, we pray in the name of Jesus because this is called Pride Month. This is not about the LBGTQ, believe it or not. This is a spirit of pride, the spirit of Leviathan taking principality over a nation, a state, a region. Why is this important? Why is this important? The Bible says, you can look at it yourself, God resists the proud, but he giveth grace to the humble. Submit yourselves to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. How many of you, how many of you have ever read that? Do you know what resist means? Do you? It means that he has made himself an enemy against you. When he says God resists the proud, it literally means that he has made, made himself an enemy against you. It's in James chapter 4, verses 6 through 8. 
Verse 8 says, Dry nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your heart, you double-minded. Now, what am I trying to say? Because I want to resist mean to go into battle against. It means to oppose you. It means God is repelling you. It means that he's frustrating any effort that you try to do. That's what the, what, they didn't just say, let's celebrate one day of pride. They said, we're going to make it a month. Hear me out. You know, this is halftime. I've been preaching on halftime since last year when we were on the year of the bride fast. Anytime you're in halftime, there's two teams that go into their locker rooms. And they're not going into the locker rooms to win during halftime. They're going into their locker rooms to win for the rest of the game. That celebration of pride was a locker room strategy for July, August, September, October, November, and December. Why? Because there's something scheduled to hit this nation. And as long as the enemy is successful in erecting an altar of pride, God has to resist the prayers. Why? Because we have become a people who are more proactive than we are. We're more reactive than we are proactive. We only start praying when there's a problem. We don't start praying because we have watchmen on the tower that can see the problem before it happens. You want to know why? Because you kill your watchmen. So you have people in the body that are designed to see. And because you hate their sight, you hate what they see, you hate that your fairy tale is getting ready to be crushed, you kill the watchman. So the only time you pray to prayer is when it happened. That's why the body looks like followers all the time. The world is innovative. The world is doing all of this. And by 10, 20 years later, the church catch on. Why? We were supposed to have watchmen and technology, watchmen, and science, watchmen, and entrepreneurship, watchmen, and the economy, watchmen, on Wall Street, watchmen, and doctor's office, watchmen, and the medical industry. And instead, they go to other countries and they go speak to their native doctors in private, because nobody wants you to know where their power comes from. And they come back over here and they rise to fame and you're like, man, as long as they use God, you're impressed by anybody. Second, they say, God, all of a sudden they with you. Here's my point. This is halftime and the strategy was pride to erect an altar so that when the nation was hit, because that's what pride is an open door. You get it? Now, how, you guys all know my analogy of open door. When you live in Alaska and you keep your door open, what's gonna come in? Good students. When you're in New York and you leave the door open, what might come in? The size of a, a rat the size of a cat. When you live in Louisiana, what might come in? Or a voodoo doctor, who knows? But I have another story of a girl I know, a woman I know, whose mother left the door open because she was gambling and drinking and everybody was in and out. And that little girl was eight year old sleeping in her bed and somebody came in on her mother's bed and raped her. That's what happened when you leave doors open. That's what happened when you're not a watchman and you say, let's not close this door. So a door has been open in the month of June that needed to be shut. And on the third day of our fast, I said, this is the month of pride. And what's the opposite of pride? Humility. The Bible says, I give grace to the humble, but I resist the proud. I said, Father, in the name of Jesus, make an example of the proud. Shut them down. Humble them. Period. And then I said, because the humbling is going to look so bad, hide us. So we don't come, uh, we don't feel the, the, guess what y'all? New York City was one of the biggest places they would have had the gay parades in. They can't go outside! They can't go outside! You don't think that was God? The wind blew it! 
and you don't think that was God? The city that erected an altar to Moloch a few years ago and lit it up because they were celebrating live abortions, babies that were alive, late term. They celebrated it in your city. I said, boy, if y'all get as mad at them as you got at me, we would get something accomplished in this world. If you got an attitude with them and grabbed a pair of balls and said something to them, maybe we wouldn't have this issue right now. But you let them in your city erect an altar to Moloch and you ain't say nothing to me, but you dumb thugging. They lit up your towers and celebrated the win of Moloch. Guess what? Moloch is requiring blood now. That's what happens. You can't service something at an evil altar and it not, it's not requiring something of you yet. It needs blood and it's coming from the blood of New Yorkers. That's why I told you when uh, Andrew Cuomo said, remember, he said it, he said, when the numbers went down for COVID, he said, God didn't do this. Faith didn't do this. Destiny didn't do this. He said, they did this. I wrote a post as soon as I heard it. Oh, I said, oh, y'all in trouble. You're in trouble. You're in trouble. Because the last time I heard somebody say what couldn't be done, it was a Titanic. And the Titanic said, not even God himself could sink this shit. And we all know what happened to that story. The governor lost his job not too long after that. But that doesn't mean, you know, somebody can get off of a position and somebody can die, but covenants are still very much alive. They don't die unless you kill them. And so God in his mercy answered a prayer. There's also a Kentucky Fried Chicken poster in New York City that says, what, the devil welcomes you? Diablo is the devil, welcomes you to New York City. Six, six, twenty-three. Two times three is six. Six, six, six. Your Kentucky Fried Chicken. Yes, a boss. I mean, anybody who is still eating Kentucky Fried Chicken, let that go viral. Any of you who is still eating KFC, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Because it's not about chicken anymore. These people are bold and they're telling you what God they serve. And with their fame and influence, they're, they're erecting altars. But how many of you know that God will not be mocked? Somebody said, well, Tiffany, there's many people that are standing in the gap for New York. And I say, yeah. Well, you'll be hidden under the secret place of the Most High God, but that doesn't mean that God's not coming. The judgment of God is coming upon that city. I don't say stuff like this lightly. I gotta, I gotta hold an account of everything I say before God, and I'm actually afraid of them in real life. This is not my opinion. I'm telling you what I heard the Lord say. Babylon will fall. The tricky thing is we don't really know the truth about what started the wildfires. They say it was a campfire, but you don't really know because they lie a lot. And I'm sure you guys have learned by now not to trust the news. Which means we also don't know what's in, this, what's in the air. We don't know what that orange substance is and what's falling in the air and into your nostrils and into your esophagus and into your thing. We don't know. Do you know that there are certain places, how many of you remember Aaron Brockovich? What's, is that that movie? There are certain places people live that's, that, that everybody there got cancer. Y'all hear me? This is not just a wildfire. This is something like a biochemical. I am not a conspiracy theorist. You guys can follow my track record from however long y'all been following me. Nothing I've said, no matter how much you hated me for saying it, fell to the ground. I'm telling you. There is something in that. 
and people are going to sprout up sick. They're going to call it incurable and nobody's going to know where it came from. So hear me what I say. That just like the enemy thought he could do a wildfire, God is also raising up wildfires. If one wildfire all the way in Canada could reach eight hours away to New York City and, and other states, imagine when God strikes you through like an arrow to a region and you don't set that. Somebody said, I was in my comments, and somebody said, well, you don't have to be an AK-47. I said, I'm not an AK-47, baby. I'm a bomb. I'm a nuke. And trust me, you haven't felt the effects of what a bomb looks like from me. When God sets you forth and shoots you, everything in your path gets burnt up by the fire of God. So we ask God to hide us under Psalms 91. I want you to continue because here's the thing. You don't necessarily want to stop praying that that clears up in New York City. You understand? You don't want it to clear up because you don't want their pride thing to happen. So you want to continue over the next few days and the rest of June to continue. God keep humbling the nation and hide us under the secret place of the Most High God. God's humbling is not bad. It's God's mercy. What's happening in New York City is mercy. People are looking around now that we're slumber, spiritually sleeping, and now saying this is like the apocalypse. Something's wrong, something's not right. This is drawing people back to repentance. It's the only way. So you don't necessarily, you wanna ask God, God, what do you want me to pray? You know, everything ain't supposed to be prayed about. I know y'all think everything should be prayed about, but I remember I had a friend once and my friend kept calling me for prayer and I would pray. And then I started getting vexed about praying and I said, well, that's dumb, God, I'm a, I pray. So why do I feel vexed about praying? And I heard the Holy Ghost say, don't pray for her no more. Stop, cut off your prayers. And I said, why do I need to cut off my prayers? He said, I'm gonna show you why. I think it was a week later, she was into sound bowls. She was into saging. She was into tarot cards. And guess what? The girl was a bona fide prophet because you're born that. The issue here was she didn't have her, her mind was going. You know, people, people, people like to talk about God being nice. And God is love and who are you to judge? But we serve a God who doesn't necessarily, he gives you free will, but the other option is bad. He doesn't say do what you want and you still gonna live a good life. He said do what you want and die. Do it my way, you'll live. I set before you today, life and death. Blessings and cursings. I'm going to give you a hint because I know sometimes y'all struggle. Choose life. That's scripture. If you are a prophet of God and still running from your call, hear me quickly. And you, most of you run from your call because you say stuff like the church hurt me, church hurt me. I understand. I understand. I understand. It's not the church though and you want to be very careful about coming against God's ecclesia because the Bible says that God's church is the only thing that the gates of hell cannot prevail. If you find yourself an enemy against the church of God, the bride of Christ, you find yourself an enemy against God. It's his bride. Now the people in that church you went to was stupid. They was dumb and stupid. But the church isn't. Sometimes we got to take responsibility of why we went there in the first place. And the truth is because God is a good God, he gave you some warning signs that you ignored. So instead of being mad at the church, be mad at yourself. And you need to say, 
I take responsibility, God. This is my fault. You showed me 15,000 red flags and I thought I was at a carnival. I even put on a clown suit because I felt like I should also be a part of the entertainment. I looked in the mirror and I thought my red nose wasn't big enough, so I went and bought another one because I stayed six months longer than I should have. This is my fault, God. I didn't mean to talk about your church. I should talk about myself. I'm the clown. Amen. I was a clown once too, guys. Don't worry, I'm talking to myself. It was me. Okay, that's deliverance. What I'm saying is, is if you are a prophet of God and you're not operating in that, you don't have a choice but for your mind to go. You start losing your mind. You stop having peace. You can't sleep at night. You toss and turn. You have insomnia. Ain't nothing ever going right in your life or any of that. Because she was experiencing that mental torment, she needed my prayers because they gave her relief for a moment. And because she had not come to repentance, God was like, uh-uh, go ahead and cut it out. She needs to go ahead and lose her mind. So God will stop you from praying. You just got to be sensitive and you have to know the word of God. This is why I say, you don't have to take my word for it, but go to God about what's going on right now and say, Father, do you want me to pray that this clears up or do you want me to continue to pray that you humble? I'm telling you now, we cannot afford for the streets to be littered with their pride parades. Hear me. They can't be. It is a halftime strategy for the rest of this year. If they are successful with pride, God will resist our prayers when the enemy comes. However, the righteous will be hid according to Psalms 91. Do we understand? I want you to begin to ask yourself, how did Christians this year, 2023, you know, we often hear about stories from back in the day and how they handle things, but how do you in your right mind let something go on so, so, so long? How did this movement go on so long? How did it happen right up under your nose and now it's bigger than life? How? You notice it's just everywhere all of a sudden, right? That's not a coincidence. It was already everywhere. But the watchmen weren't on their post because you tried to kill them. So what is your assignment? Your assignment is to pray against the agenda, to prophesy against it like the book of Ezekiel. He said, man of God, prophesy against this. Anytime I listen to the false prophets of the media, which is not often, and I hear something, normally some, you want to y'all send me something, and I begin to prophesy against it. Oh, the next virus will be 10 times worse than the last one. I prophesy against it in the name of Jesus. Just like the winds passed over Rochester and other places and hit them hard, that same virus will pass over. Come on, y'all better know strategy. There's a reason that virus... Nobody in my house stayed in my house. Everybody worked outside. My daughter worked outside the house. Nobody stayed inside. Nobody caught COVID. As a matter of fact, somebody, one person caught COVID that did not live with me, came over because they didn't want to be home by themselves, sick. None of us caught COVID. None of us wore masks. None of us. Why? God let this thing pass over. You have an impenetrable force field around you that when you begin to declare, let this thing pass over me, you can walk in New York City without a mask on and whatever protocols are falling on the ground will not touch you. Gosh, what's his name, April? Uh, the man, that didn't help. The minister that was in a bubonic plague. John G. Lake. This was a plague that was, I mean, deadly. And they said that he could go around anybody with the bubonic plague and it never touched them. So much so that they grabbed some of his cells and some of his blood and checked it under the microscope. They couldn't believe it. And they saw when the plague tried to come to him, it was a barrier, it couldn't touch him. Come on. It's time for the church to wake up. 
Y'all, this is a supernatural war. We shouldn't be the only ones not operating in the supernatural. You can declare right now over your house, God, make my house impenetrable. Make my children impenetrable. Make my wife, make my husband impenetrable. Make my neighborhood impenetrable. Make my... Because you declared it. Remember what the other word for deliverance was? An utterance, a declaration, a word. I'm going to get to my message tonight. But I also warned you about the false prophets of the media. How many of you have heard my message? God told me that the false prophets of the media were the child molesters to his body. Not the false prophets of the media, I'm thinking of the news. The false prophets of y'all churches. He told me that they were the child molesters to God's body. Child molesters. I'm going to read it really quickly because I think you should hear it again. But this is what I heard the spirit of the Lord say. He said to me, daughter, false prophets are likened unto child molesters. They do their best damage when the believer is young, not in age. You can be 50 years old, 60 years old and still be young in God. You could have spent your whole life in church and still be young in God because you don't know anything. Amen. Your age does not matter how old you are in God. You could be 18 years old and strong in God. So the false prophets do their best damage when a believer is young, not in age, but in word, in their prayer life, in their relationship and intimacy with God. These false prophets build trust. How do they build trust? They use divination that you think is the word of knowledge. Hey, I see your house. Do you live at 1709? Yes, yes, I do, Papa. Prophesy! Do I know you? Do I know you? I don't know you. I see. Is there anybody named Trikinda in your family? Oh my God, yes, Papa, yes, Papa. Prophesy! I see you're getting married. I see if you sow a thousand dollar seed, I'm gonna get you a husband. But, but I just gave some money last week. That doesn't matter. This week is I need the money this week. Prophesy! That's how they build trust. Because accuracy does not mean you're real. Psychics are accurate. Witch doctors are accurate. It's called divination. They groom you by doing those things. And then they appear suddenly. And by this time they have many victims, most who have fallen in love with their predators. The ones who want to speak out to warn can't. Why? Because now they become conditioned to fear. Fear of what happens when the warning falls on deaf ears. Fear of not wanting to embarrass the other victims by telling their stories. Fear of what happens when they're, when they're attacked even more. How many of you know that when you speak out like I do, the world hates you? You have to ask God to set your face like a flint so you don't feel the attacks of everybody else. People say, Tiffany, you really don't care what nobody thinks. I just don't even notice because he graced me. You wanna know the anointing? I wish we could get a real revelation of it. When the shepherd, when the, when the sheep had all these nets and insects, which is y'all on social media bothering me all the time, trying to bother me, right? All in the eyes, all in the mouth. The shepherd put oil over the sheep's head so that when the attacks came, it slid right off of them. I'm anointed for this. I'm anointed for this. You are anointed for this. It's the anointing that allows you to do this work. You can't do it in your own flesh. You can't do it by your own works. The Bible says, I'm sorry, this is what I heard the Lord say, that the false prophet, AKA the child molesters have a lot of power and influence. They're well liked. They have the loudest voices. 
they have the biggest crowds. And the victims, nobody knows them, they're silenced and they're muzzled. But you have other people, leaders specifically, in the body of Christ, who see these false prophets molesting God's body. And they stay quiet, protecting them even. Just like they've done in their childhood homes, which is why the family molester or rapist is still roaming free to pick another victim for another day. God told me that what I was seeing is what's happening in the homes of people secretly for generations. A child gets molested or raped. The molester grooms them into secrecy, intimidation, and fear. The child either speaks out and gets reprimanded and told that they're lying or they just keep quiet. Very few grow up to have boldness to warn and save the others because it's been beat out them. These are your more passive and scared Christians. The issue here is most people know the predator because they've been a victim of that person. And that's what's going on now on social media. The false prophets are on the rise. And people are warning the body of Christ that these are predators and the body of believers are acting like the parents who didn't believe their own while reprimanding or beating the boldness out of them. Remember when you saw the eight-year-old girl and you called her fast? She wasn't fast. She was being raped. Remember the 12-year-old that you thought was being fast when, you, when they were younger? They weren't being fast. They were being molested and sodomized and you didn't say anything. Saying things like, well, what did you do to deserve it? You shouldn't have had that on. Blaming everybody except for the actual molester. The Spirit of God told me personally to give warning to the body of Christ to protect his sheep against these false prophets. Their assignment is no light thing. These false prophets, or in other words, the child molesters to God's body, comes to tear the part of the life of the child so that when they get older, they have all types of perversion and identity issues. This is why you see so many gay, flamboyant, effeminate, or super muscular women, pastors, prophets, etc., now in the churches. Not all of them, but the vast majority of them were molested as children and that spirit has followed them. They are the same sex attracted and have perverted the pulpit of God by preaching one minute and pumping their penises into the hole of a man the next. That's why the body of Christ is in so much need of correction, healing, and restoration. Because this is what they're doing to new believers right now, the babes. You guys, we have been praying for revival, begging God for revival, singing about revival. Wouldn't it be a shame to watch this revival we begged God for fall into the hands of the false prophets? Or in other words, child molesters. It would be a shame. I'm going to stop there, but I do want to say this part. Many of you have been saying, y'all need to stop all of this fighting. This is division in the body. But how many of you know this is not Christian versus Christian fight? If this were a Christian versus Christian fight, you do, it, you, you do what the Bible says, go to your brother in secret. If he doesn't hear you, take a two or three witnesses. If he doesn't hear you, take it to the church. If he doesn't hear you, he's cast over to the heathens. If this was a Christian versus Christian fight, that applies. But how many of you know that the false prophets have so successfully identified themselves as a Christian, you can't tell the difference between who is who? This is a prophet of Baal versus prophet of God fight. There is no division when you're not fighting God's own. This is a plucking up of a rebellious cell in the body. How many of you know that they call cancerous cells rebellious cells? I pray me sharing this and you listening to the live warning on YouTube will prompt you to repentance. There is something bad coming and it is necessary that we all go into a lifestyle of repentance. I'm going to use these two examples, New York City right now and the false prophets to give you this warning again. And it has everything to do with pride and how God resists you. But there's a story in the book of Joshua. And God tells Joshua after Moses died, I'm going to be with you wherever you go. You can read the story in Joshua chapter 6 and 7. I'm going to be with you wherever you go. Wherever you go, I'm going to be with you. You're going to win every battle. Matter of fact, go to the walls of Jericho. This is how I want you to win this battle. These impenetrable walls that nobody could take down, you're going to take down. You're just going to keep circling, circling, and you're going to let out a shout of praise. It's going to fall to the ground. You're going to win. I've given it over to you. Don't worry. They go, y'all, and they win without blinking twice. They win, and then he said, sorry, he says to them, 
just FYI, don't touch this accursed thing. You can have the silver and gold over here, but this stuff, don't touch it. Because if you touch it, you're going to be accursed. The camp of the children of Israel are going to be cursed. And uh, the nation was going to be cursed. Keep yourself from the accursed thing, lest you make yourself accursed and make the camp of Israel accursed and trouble it. He said, okay, bet. I got you, God. Then he said in verse 19, I want to go there really quick. It's Joshua chapter 6. But all the silver and gold and vessels of brass and iron are consecrated to the Lord. You can keep that. He goes to, they win the battle, they go and win. He says, hey, next I want to take over AI, but we don't need all these men because we're guaranteed the victory. So we're only going to take like two or 3,000. We can leave the all rest here. You can relax and just chill out and we're already guaranteed. So we're going to win. They go to the battle of AI and they lose horribly. Everybody dies. Now this story is for you if you are a Christian who is a praying woman or man of God, fasting, you ain't doing nothing wrong, you live by the precepts, the commands of God, everything you do is right in order to what God is doing and still you look up and say, God, what am I doing wrong? Why is everything not working out for me? What did I do wrong? It's the same thing Joshua said when his men died. You promised me. How did you get down on your promise, God? And he said, stand up. Go ahead, stand up. I told you not to take any accursed thing from this land, and somebody did. Isn't it crazy how he did not take the accursed thing but was held responsible by what somebody else did? I want you to ask yourself who's around you. I've been around somebody once. I'm an active dreamer. I have dreams every day. Some people, haters, be like, everybody don't dream every day. God ain't saying that much. Can you imagine somebody would take their crooked mouth teeth and say that to somebody, that God ain't speaking that much? What the nerve? You got a lot of nerve. Maybe he ain't talking that much to you. Now, child, people just be out here just to say anything on Harriet Tubman's internet. My goodness. See, I shouldn't have told that joke. I'm trying to figure out where I was at with my story. <laughs> thank you, thank you. They wake up. Oh, I, I, I was around somebody, and I completely stopped having dreams. I didn't think nothing about it, prophet, at first. I said to myself, well, maybe God wanted to give me a break. Maybe this is a season of relaxation. I said that to myself. Thanks, <laughs> You guys, I did, not, I did not match it up, but the second I kept getting vexed and got that person out of my life, that day my dreams came back. Because I was around the accursed thing. Not that they knew that they were accursed, but that they had an open door and had allowed some accursed things to enter. And because what did uh, a gold say of millions? I'm an equator. Which means that anything that comes near me that's not living right is gonna get too hot for you. Anytime you get near me and you're not living right, you're gonna automatically start saying And you back up and you become normal again and you're like, okay, I'm normal again. Let me come next to her again So they had they had this thing and he and he goes to the camp and he said who took it? And it was a man named Akon had taken an accursed thing from the walls of Jericho and they had to deal with him and once they dealt with him and repented of their sins, y'all, guess what? God restored them back together again. Amen? God will restart resisting the enemy. God will resist the enemy for us when we start resisting the enemy. I ask God to give me this message in a way that, like, y'all would just hear me. Right? We have more power than we think we do. If I can be this one girl that can cause such a ruckus in the world, you understand? Imagine what all of us do if we work on one accord. What do I mean by that? 
the place that's targeting your children you're gonna have to stop spending your money there now y'all didn't love that place more than me so you're not talking to somebody who doesn't understand because I'm still not going into Walmart y'all see the meme hello is it safe here that's me I'm not going in there I don't care it's not my thing it's not my style What I'm saying is, is if you get on your knees and beg God for provision, you beg God for money. And the second you get your money, you spend it at a place who's told you I'm targeting your children. You have slapped God in your face. It's deeper than just going into a store and shopping there. It's deeper than them taking it out because y'all, they lost a lot of money when we all stood up. They lost a lot when they all stood up. <clears throat> Budweiser hired a new PR firm. And that person was younger and thought that inclusion was a good thing and thought that they should take this a thousand year old manly man brand and give it to a trans. And they started to promote it. Y'all, they saw the biggest, they were the number one beer for a thousand years and they plummeted, still not able to get back. The men had more balls than believers do. The men stood up to what was going on more than God's people stood up to what was going on. Why? So I'm telling you now, I used to, I, I gave a lot of grace to the place that's targeting your children because I liked it. But I remember last year, everything, you know how, you know, one day everything just started coming together and you like, huh, that's what was going on. Last year I remember going there looking for a pocket Bible. I really wanted a pocket Bible. Fortune remembers because she was trying to help me. We was in Target trying to find a pocket Bible and I was like, why does not Target have a pocket Bible? It's like, who doesn't have a pocket Bible? They didn't have any Bibles. And I was like, hey, looking for a Bible. They're like, oh, we don't really sell Bibles here. And I was like, I could have swore they used to sell Bibles here. Maybe I'm tripping. I don't remember. They did, right? Okay, I didn't think I was tripping. So then, but I didn't think nothing of it, really. I think around Halloween time, they started to promote their Ouija boards. They had salespeople in the aisles with the children promoting the Ouija board. Maybe I gave that a little grace too, because nobody knows what Halloween is, especially if you're not saved. But that's why I want you to understand when the word says, hallowed be thy name, and y'all somewhere trick or trunk and it starts screaming out Halloween, you're still worshiping that deity. It is a witch's holiday. No Christian should be substituting to dress their children up. We should be able to teach our children, even if you don't dress up, we'll never celebrate this holiday. Stop trying to find your kids' substitutes. That's why they grow up to play around with sage because everybody's trying to find a substitute for the true and living God. They learned it at home. Hallow ween, hallow be thy name. So I started to put two and three together. Because it wasn't about LGBTQ, y'all. I want you to know that's just a, that's a smoke screen. It don't got nothing to do with that. It was a Satanist that made that stuff. And then you got believers that say things like, well, that's Satanist. That they don't really, they don't even believe in Satan. They're just saying that. I'm trying to ask God still, some fights I just need to let go of. God, don't let me argue with everybody. That's a real thing. That's really what they believe. This Satanist said, your God doesn't love you, ours does. They were targeting your eight-year-olds, your seven-year-olds, and they had their stuff right at the front of that store. Now, I know some information about this CEO of the place that's targeting your children. Because I was told from a reliable source, I won't say it out loud for the sake of just needing a few more witnesses. Because as I said before, I am very big on not casting judgment or assuming things. 
But this source is reliable enough for me to say, I believe it. I just won't say it out loud. But I am saying to you that it's dangerous enough for me to say, don't spend your money there anymore. Until they get a new CEO, until they turn things around, don't spend your money there anymore. Because you don't want to be found among the ones that are begging God for provision and taking your money and feeding their God. I'm going to even say this, the place that has the mermaid logo that y'all love to drink your coffees from. Because most of you need to cut your coffee addictions anyway. Let's just be honest. I am not saying this from a place of religion. I'm not saying this from a place of, oh, we can't have nothing. Not if it's the devil's. No, you shouldn't want it. Why do you want it? Why do you want it? Is there a reason you want it? I heard a witch say, it was so powerful. She had come out of um, that place and she's working for God now. But she said, if you look closely at every logo, they will tell you which God that they made their initiation to. It's no joke. It's no joke. There's so many other places to go get your coffees from. But what you don't want to do is continue to service the God that's the, that hates your God. So I'm not saying this because it's a popular thing to be saying. Those of you that know me say, knows that I've been saying this stuff since 2015. When I was on Periscope, this ain't nothing new. What I am saying is this season, watch where you're spending your money. Because you're not just spending money, you're feeding a beast. Just like when you sow into a false prophet thinking that you're getting a breakthrough. What you did was you serviced that altar with your money. And now you've come into covenant with the deity and you don't even know it. You know, God's covenant comes with rules and regulation. He lays out what he expects from you. The devil covenant is hidden. He don't even want you to know what you came into contact with. You leave that false prophet and now all of a sudden you having dreams up the wazoo and you don't have the revelation that as soon as you wake up, you're supposed to be canceling those dreams because the enemy initiates you in a dream. God made covenant with Abraham in a dream. God made covenant with Solomon in a dream. Read your Bible. Covenants can be made in a dream. If you don't begin to wake up and cancel those dreams, you having sex in a dream, you having more, your sex life more popping in a dream than it's ever been in real life. You need to wake up and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I cancel this dream. Anything, I know the world calls it sex, but anytime you have sex with somebody, you're actually in covenant with that person. You know how we think about things, it's different from how God thinks about things. It's not just cheating on your wife. You have now covenanted yourself with the devil. So if you're having sex in your dreams, that's why they call it a spirit husband or a spirit wife. People are like, where is that in the Bible? It's just simple. When you have sex with somebody, you're in covenant with them. You knew them. That person has now married you in the realm of the spirit. They'll give you a certain scent, make you stink, have everybody stay away from you. You don't have to go to the doctor anymore, whoever I'm talking to in there. This is a spiritual problem and it's gonna break tonight in the name of Jesus. It has you smelling rotten and fishy. You haven't had sex with somebody in years, but you stink. That's a spirit husband making sure that everybody stays away from you. You have covenanted yourself with the enemy. So you wake up and you say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I divorce myself from that familiar spirit. Do you know that covenants um, renew themselves? Like there's a certain time where the covenant dies out, the contract dies out and it needs to renew itself. And it's like, oh, she don't know nothing about what's going on. He definitely don't know what's going on. Let me just do what I do in a dream because they're not going to wake up and break this covenant because I need to renew it. It's a familiar spirit. It's a spirit that's been in the bloodline for years and years and years and years. And it can't afford to go to another family because it's been with yours for 500 years. That's why you have the same mannerisms as your grandma had. That's why you have the same mannerisms as your father had. That's why y'all look alike. That's why they say, man, you look just like your daddy. 
because you also look like him in the realm of the spirit. So you want to wake up and then begin to cancel that stuff. Somebody say, well, Tiffany, I'm so tired. I've been canceling every day. I don't care how tired you get. Every time you wake up, you cancel that dream in the name of Jesus because it's waiting for you to get tired. But if you continue to do it, it's going to eventually break. Amen? So stop spending your money there because you don't want to continue to beg God for provision and service the altar of Baal Yonsei with it. You don't want to continue to ask God for provision and service the altars of these celebrities that are telling you that they serve God, they serve the devil. I don't even know this lady name. She sings beautiful songs and every time she leaves, she signs out like this. That's Baphomet. Beautiful girl. Y'all know her songs. You probably sing them. And you might not have noticed that she did it, and you're going to notice now when you see her on Instagram because she sign off like this every time. That's Baphomet. She's telling you what God she served. So you have many leaders that say things like, I've seen their subliminal posts. You guys don't do this. This is a church dividing against itself. Don't say anything. Don't fight them. Make sure you get a spiritual covering that's necessary. Be careful about exposing people. You know, I've had leaders come to me, tell me that other leaders call them and say, Tiffany needs to watch out. The witches are going to get her. And I make a declaration in the office of a prophet to declare you will lose your influence this month. You wonder why everything is going down. You lose your influence this month. The second you begin to tell a prophet of God to be worried about what a witch is doing, may you lose your influence this month. Do you know how dangerous it is to tell a child of God to be fearful about what the enemy is doing because you scared? God is taking, how many of you remember me saying that? God is taking influences. People with massive influence, you're getting ready to see their influence die out. There'll be a byword and a proverb. People that say, I remember when. Where are they now? Influence dead. Why? Because they played against God and God's people. I want you to go to Revelations 2.20, whichever version you read, but the reason we are not spending our money there anymore is because God is over our demonic agreement with inclusion and with tolerance. The Bible says in Revelations chapter 2, verses 20, Notwithstanding, I have a few things against you because you suffereth that woman Jezebel that calls herself a prophetess to teach and seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed to idols. Now, what does the word suffereth mean? It means to allow and it means to leave them alone. I'm gonna say that again. Y'all need to leave them prophets alone. They ain't doing nothing. Y'all need to leave. let God deal with it. Y'all need to leave them alone. But so funny, God said, Jesus said here in red, I have against you because you left them alone. You were the one that was supposed to do something. Do you know that God sends people to do things? I don't know why people say things like, Tiffany, you don't have to do this. Y'all don't have to do nothing. Let God do his work. Do you know all throughout the Bible, God sent a person to do his work? When did it change? Can you tell me? Nobody knows? It didn't? You sure? Because they be trying to trick me. All throughout scripture, God used a person to do his work. He said, I have against you that you saw this prophet and this prophet is up here teaching the third eye, teaching astral projection, supporting them, and you left them alone. Another translation, I think it's amplified and many others say, I have something against you is that you tolerated Jezebel. 
You tolerated her. And God is coming after our tolerance and inclusion. He wants you to pick a side. Who is on the Lord's side? You can't be, you can't be on your mistress's side and your wife's side at the same time. You can't be on your side dude's side and your husband's side at the same time. You got to pick a side. Amen? And then there's that doctrine called nice. Y'all heard of it? Be nice. Be nice. That's not God. Be nice. It's not in the Bible. But I want to give you an example that I hope you understand. I want you to look at a marriage. Husband and wife doing their thing, love each other. Something happens. The husband breaks his covenant and cheats on his wife. The wife finds out about it. She's under the delusion of the doctrine of devils called be nice. And what does she do in order to make her husband happy and not buck up against his anger? She invites the mistress over and just invites her to be a second wife so that she doesn't ruffle any feathers, get in trouble with anything, trying to show the love of God, evangelizing in all the wrong ways because she's been taught to be nice. And let's be honest, she was probably molested when she was younger because that is normally the fruit of somebody not being able to stick up for themselves. Does that make sense to y'all? But it's dumb, right? Now, what was she supposed to do if that, God forbid, ever happened? When you make a covenant with God, she made the covenant with her husband, but the covenant was really before God. You go back to God with the covenant you made and you say, God, this is a covenant breaking spirit. In the name of Jesus, I pray that the judgment of God come upon this situation concerning my marriage. This is my marriage, not our marriage, it's mine. She gonna have to find her own husband. And you war in the spirit about covenant. I'm gonna tell this story, I don't care what y'all think about it. I've been talked about like a dog telling this story, but I'm gonna tell it again, cause it's good. There's an old woman, maybe she's in her 80s now, she's probably watching, but she told me a story about what happened maybe in the 1940s, 30s, when she had first got married. She got married as a teenager. Eight children, nine children with one man who always cheated on her. But she was married as a teenager, didn't know no better. Poor, South, didn't know no better. She said she went to the woman's house, one baby on this hip, one baby on that hip, and demanded that her husband come out. The lady said, oh, I'm never leaving him alone. It'll be over her dead body. So mother, who wasn't mother at the time, Sam, she was a youngin. Now, back in those days, they did things differently. They took vows and covenants differently, right? They, they, some people are like, well, I would have left him, but this was the 40s, 50s. Come on, y'all, let's be serious. They didn't leave. She also wasn't saved when they first got married. She got saved over time. So now she's saved, but her husband isn't. And this woman is telling her, I'm, not, I'm never leaving him, and it'll be over her dead body because she loved him too. So mother went to God she did not pray for the death of this woman, but she said, God, my covenant is being violated. I don't know how to fight them because he's always cheating. I don't know how to fight her because she says she wasn't gonna let him go, but you are God that fights for covenant. That's my husband. And I pray that you would judge this situation and that you fight for my covenant. That lady dropped dead a few days later. She didn't pray for her death. She didn't pray for her death. The lady spoke it and said over her dead body was she never letting that lady husband go. And all, all, all mother said to God was, show up strong for the covenant I made you. And if that was the requirement to let go of the covenant, be it unto you according to your faith. The lady dropped dead and mother did something I still can't understand to this day, prophet. She ironed her husband's clothes to go to the funeral. I ain't about that life. I ain't gay. I'm like, wow, what a woman. You got a first track ticket to heaven, mother. I know it. 
you're the first one going to be up there. I'm going to say it again. Mother did not kill her, nor did she go into prayer and mention death. But when covenant is broken, you can go to the God of covenant, the covenant keeping God. And whatever that person said in secret that you don't know about over your dead body, you'll never get married over your dead body. They're going to take out every man in your family over your dead body. God, they're breaking covenant. Deal with it. You don't have to say nothing else. That's up to God how he chooses to deal with that. Amen. I heard God say he wanted us to pray against monitoring spirits. So I want you to begin to do that every single day during your prayer time. Especially if you have dreams of animals in your dreams, things watching you, anything in your dream, dogs, cats, rats, black birds watching you. That is a monitoring spirit monitoring your life. I need you to blind the monitoring spirit with the blood of Jesus Christ. Anybody using third eye sight to check and peer into your life, blind it with the blood. I need you to begin to pray that those things are decapitated in the realm of the spirit, that their eyes are gouged out in the realm of the spirit. You hear me? These things have to die. If you're trying to figure out why this demonic pattern in your life is happening year after year, it's a monitoring spirit monitoring you. If I'm telling you this month, pay careful attention to anybody calling you to check up on what's going on. If you get a check in your spirit, just hang up. Just say, I got to go. I got something to do. I just want you to, this is how you practice your gift of discerning of spirits. Then I want you to say to God, God, I had, a, I had an uneasy feeling about, in my spirit about this phone call, but I love this person. Can you, can you let me know what it was? And God is going to reveal to you what it was and what that person had. It's going to be your favorite. Be prepared. It's going to be somebody you really love. They were sent in your life to be a monitoring spirit. So you're going to ask God to deactivate whatever cord that they have latched onto you and to disrupt their communication systems with each other. Amen? Now to my real message. How many of you know that none of that was my message? But I'm not going to be here long. 2 Kings chapter 13, verse 17. I'm going to start at verse 15. And Elisha said unto him, now this was a man, Joash, that he was talking to. And Joash was not necessarily a false past. He wasn't necessarily false and served false gods. He was a false worshiper who served the true and living God. You know there's a difference? He wasn't a man that served false God. He was just a false worshiper that served our God. There's a difference. Some of you are that person too. They were, Elisha was getting ready to go on to be with God. And he was, Joash was afraid that they were going to lose battle because they didn't have the prophet there anymore. And so Elisha said in verse 15, I want you to take a bow and an arrow. And he took unto him bows and arrows. And he said to the king of Israel, put thine hand upon the bow. And he put his hand upon it. And Elisha put his hands upon the king's hands. So Elisha might not putting, be putting his hands upon your hands, but as you load up your bow, it's the Holy Ghost that is putting his hands on top of your hands. It's the, it's the hand of God that's going to make this powerful. Verse 17 said, and he said, open the window eastward, and he opened it, and Elisha said, shoot, and he shot. And he said, the arrow of the Lord's deliverance and the arrow of deliverance from Syria for thou shalt smite the Syrians till thou have consumed them. And verse 18 says, and he said, take the arrows. And he took them and he said unto the king of Israel, smite upon the ground. And Joash hit the ground three times and stopped. Verse 19 said, and the man of God was mad with him and said, you should have hit this five or six times. Then you would have killed and destroyed Syria until you had consumed it but you only did it three times. There's a word I want you to just solidify in your mind. And it's 
until you have consumed them 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 tell me how many times I got to pray Tiffany until you have consumed them how many times do I have to pray until you have consumed them how many times do I have to fast on this until you have consumed them how many times do I need to pray for my deliverance until you have consumed them how many times do you have to pray against this infirmity until you have consumed them how many times do you need to pray on this breakthrough until you have consumed them how many times do you need to pray against this curse until you have consumed them? How many times do you need to pray about your sight until you have consumed them? How many times do you need to pray against the enemy until you have consumed them? I get so many questions, Tiffany. How, how many times do I have to pray against this stuff until you have consumed them? But many of you are like Joash, where you take your arrow of deliverance and you only hit it three times and you say that that's enough. And I think it's so interesting that while we don't know why he hit it three times, your excuse could be, well, I didn't know I could go any further. Your excuse could be, well, I needed strength and the arrow and the thing is too heavy and I didn't know what if Your excuse could be, well, where is the target even? I couldn't even see far. Your excuse is, I don't even know if I'm doing this right. The first and second time looked bad, and I just felt like the third time I should have stopped by now. Why haven't you kept smiting whatever your enemy is with the arrow of deliverance? Years ago, I took archery class. And how many of you know that that's not easy work? You need real upper body strength. That is hard work. But some of the things I notice is that shooting arrow requires strength and focus. And I want you to look at the arrows of deliverance like your prayer life. I want you to look at those arrows like the word of God. And when you're shooting the arrow of deliverance in your life or in that area, you need strength and you need target focus on what you're hitting. What does strength look like in the realm of the spirit? You're praying and fasting. Any time somebody says they're getting tired, I'm like, baby, build yourself up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. None of you should be tired anymore as you're fasting and praying with covered by God. Amen? Praying for an hour should be nothing to you. Hand me my clicker out of my purse. Shooting an arrow requires strength and focus just like prayer. It has to be shot at the right moment. How many of you know if an arrow is not shot at the right moment, the wind can hit it? Or if you're targeting a deer and that deer is getting ready to run off, you need to make sure that the shot is at the right time. You don't stop shooting the enemy because the enemy doesn't stop shooting you. Many of you have experienced God, uh, the enemy's fiery darts. That's a fiery arrow. Some of you have now been feeling physical manifestations of that fiery dart even in your body. How many of you know that that's not a physical ailment? That is a spiritual arrow that hit you. The goal of it is to make you lose faith. The goal of it is for you to go to the hospital day by day, week by week, trying to get it, we'll see what's happening. And they say, we can't say anything. And your faith goes down and down and down. Why? Because you're more conscious of how you feel than what God said. That's why he said in Ephesians, lift up their whole, the shield of faith that quenches the fiery dart of the enemy. I want you, while you're in prayer, to have an imagination of the shield of faith being a supernatural pool of water. That every time the enemy is shooting arrows at your head, arrows at your life, arrows at your health, arrows at your children, as soon as the fiery dart hits, it gets quenched by the water that's in your shield. Living water. You keep shooting because the enemy won't stop shooting his fiery darts. The thing about shooting an arrow is that you have a bullseye, but you really are hitting that arrow by faith. And that's what it requires, it's, it's, a, it's a lifestyle of faith to make sure that you're hitting it correctly. I think what's fascinating is that what Elisha really said to him was, you hit it three times, be it unto you according to your faith. And he lost. So the reason I wanted to get my clicker, I shared on a live I was doing called, do this when you wake up. I have a clicker. 
and I just got it for fun. And so what I do is every time I'm saying something in prayer, I started at zero. Let's say your faith life has gone down. Life has beat you up and you really need to build it back up. Well, before I leave out of the bed, I'll say a scripture a hundred times. So what I told everybody to do was take a clicker and before you get out of the bed, just say, I trust you. I trust you, daddy. I trust you, God. Whatever you say, I trust you. I believe you. I trust you. I have faith in you. I trust you. I trust everything you say. I trust everything you're doing. I trust you. Everything you said to come true is true. I trust you in this area of my life. I trust you in my finances. I trust you in my marriage. I trust you on my job. I trust you in everything that I'm doing. I trust you, God. I trust you. You're not a man that you could lie. You're not the son of man that could repent. You can't lie to me. Lying words can't come out of your mouth. I trust you. Who's better to do it than you? I trust you, God. That's shooting an arrow of deliverance. Let me say it another way. You said I was healed. You said I was healed. I am healed. I'm healed. By every strap you took, I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. You want to be specific? Call out the part of your body that needs healing. You need to say it. Your kidney is healed in the name of Jesus. My kidney is healed. My kidney is healed. Whatever it is, your heart, your heart is healed. My heart is healed. My heart is healed. My heart is healed. I have been cured. I have been cured. The blood of Jesus has healed me. The blood of Jesus has healed me. You were wounded for my transgressions. You were abused for my iniquities. The chastisements of your peace was upon us. Every stripe you took, I am healed. I am healed. You said in Psalms 39, 139, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works. I declare that everything in me is perfection. I am healed. Breast hear the word of the Lord. Womb hear the word of the Lord. Feet hear the word of the Lord. Liver hear the word of the Lord. You are perfect according to God. You flow in the direct harmony of God. You flow in the divine orchestra of God. Wherever God throws his hands, everything in my body goes to the orchestration of God. You are organized. No weapon against me will prosper. No weapon formed against your liver will prosper. No weapon formed against your cells will prosper. I command any weapon that is formed to deform itself. Deform yourself. Deform yourself. Deform yourself. Any well-organized weapon against my life, deform now in the name of Jesus. Dissipate. Disorganize yourself. Disappear. Go away. Vanish in the name of Jesus. No weapon. No weapon. No weapon formed. No weapon formed against me. No weapon formed against my marriage. No weapon formed against my children. No weapon formed against my car. No weapon formed against my plane. No weapon formed against me prospers. No weapon formed against my bank account. No weapon formed against my future. No weapon formed against my bloodline. I declare Isaiah 7, 7, thus saith the Lord, it shall not stand and it shall not come to pass. It shall not stand, it shall not come to pass. It shall not stand, it shall not come to pass. I forbid it. I forbid you. 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 In the name of Jesus, forbid it. You're forbidden. You have no right to touch my child. You have no right to touch my body. I forbid you. In the name of Jesus, thus saith the Lord, you shall not stand. You shall not come to pass. I forbid you in the name of Jesus. Your access has been forbidden. Your access is forbidden. You have been forbidden. I forbid you. You're in high treason. I forbid you. May the judgment of the Lord come upon you. May the judgment of the Lord come upon you. If you're praying against monetary spirits, I blind them in the name of Jesus. Let them be blinded. Let them be decapitated. Pluck out their eyes. Loose them, God, in the name of Jesus. Let them fall dead to the ground and bear no fruit. Cut off their communication with me and my bloodline. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You shoot the arrow of the Lord's deliverance over your situation. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You shoot the arrow of the Lord's deliverance over your situation. I told you before, patience isn't time. Patience is a posture. Patience is not time. You may say, Tiffany, I've been trying to get this done in 40 years. What you've been struggling with for 40 years, God will give you a breakthrough in four days when you shoot out that arrow of deliverance. Now, deliverance means different things in different scriptures. But one of the definitions of the word deliverance here. And um, I want you to go through this, this scripture really quick. Psalms 18, 14. 
He says, yea, he sent out his arrow and scattered them. He shot out lightnings and discomfited them. The word deliverance in 2 Kings 13, 17 means deliverance usually by God through a human agency, which is what we just got done talking about. But this word deliverance also means safety, it means victory, it means help, and it means rescue. It means the rescue of a person, a nation, or spiritual rescue. Amen? Now what I thought was fascinating is that the word lightning in Psalms 18, 14, one of the definitions of this word is a glittering sword. Did y'all just see what happened in Massachusetts when there was a church and a pastor was talking about something about the Bible? And just two or three days ago, God struck that church down with lightning and it caught fire and burned down to the ground. Now, most people who didn't know the story felt bad for the church. That's why I keep telling y'all, y'all need to start praying to ask God what's really going on. Somebody DM me and said, I now know the whole story and knowing the whole story matters. I said, it matters. This man spoke against God and spoke against the word of God in the pulpit as a pastor. And God sent down his glittering sword, lightning, and discomfited them. What does discomfort mean? To destroy, to crush. But it also means to confuse and to break. So this season, the arrow of the Lord's deliverance is our weapon of choice. Amen? The, the arrow of the Lord's deliverance is our weapon of choice. When we pray, we are launching out God's arrow of deliverance over whatever we say. It could be you needing the, the arrow of the Lord's deliverance in any part of your body because the enemy tried to hit it with a fiery dart and you continue to hit that arrow with the deliverance how many times? Until it's been consumed. How many times? So that means you don't quit, right? Until when? That means until you don't see it no more. That means you don't come off that prayer point until you don't see it no more. And here's the thing that I think is so powerful. Stop dealing with the problem and get to the root. So if you see your spouse acting up, you see your children acting up, you see your money getting funny, say, thank you, God, for showing me the fruit. Let me get to this root. The fruit is only there to frustrate you. Because if you don't get to the root, all you're going to do with fruit is keep chasing it around, and that's when you get battle fatigue, fighting the enemy that's not really your enemy. That wasn't your enemy, it's the root that's your enemy. Amen? So you get into your prayer time and you begin to tear down these altars. You begin to tear, people are like, Tiffany, this is Old Testament, but you know, in the book of Jude, he gave you Old Testament examples. He said, just like the time of Sodom and Gomorrah, just like the time with the Red Sea in Egypt. Come on, y'all, we gotta start reading. Anybody in here that don't read the Bible, you're, you're lost, you're gone. It's too bad for you, it's over. That's just the truth. Any of you that don't prioritize reading the Bible and you pray more than you read your word of God, it's a wrap. It's a, you're guaranteed to be deceived. Guaranteed. Nobody in here should pray more than they read the word of God. Your prayer life should not exceed your word life. Because if you don't know the word, what you praying? He said, and you pray, but you pray amiss. There's a way to pray and still be wrong. There has to be a hunger that comes back to the body. I don't know about y'all, but the word of warning God gave me put another hunger for God in me. I got on my face and got the repenting again to make sure I was straight. Those aren't warnings that you give and think you good. Those are warnings that you go and self-examine. Everybody should have self-examined. I want to spend some time praying, but before we do that, I want to give one last example that I thought was too powerful. The arrow of the Lord's deliverance. The arrow of the Lord's deliverance. I was watching TV 
No, I was on YouTube. And uh, I saw this um, YouTube video, and I didn't see the title of it. It just looked like something about eating raw salads, and I'd be wanting to know more ingredients for a salad. But I didn't see the full title of the video, so I clicked on the video. I learned that this video was about this man who beat stage four cancer without going to chemo. And he said he was very healthy, physically fit, nothing was wrong with him. All of a sudden, he has these tumors in his body. They say he's stage three going into stage four. And he said he wanted to try to find the cure on his own because he knew he just couldn't do chemo. So what he did was a therapy method that they founded back in 1930. And the method, is, he said chemo focused on all the cells. So it didn't just kill the bad cells, it killed the good cells too. But this method that was founded in 1930 killed only the bad cells. Or no, 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 sorry. It only put its focus on the good cells. It didn't even focus on, it's like it ignored the bad cells. You, you hear me? So what he had to do was drink 14 to 15 green juices every single day for two years. 14 to 15 green juices, about 16 ounces every single day. He did it for two years. Prophet, they can't find no trace of cancer in his body. I need you to understand what that meant spiritually because God gives me a revelation. I can see a dog pooping outside. I'm like, I got a revelation. One of the things I'm always telling you is that the Bible says the greatest commandment of all is to love God with everything you got, right? And he said the word commandment means authoritative prescription. It's medicine. It's the best medicine you can take. Whenever you're sick, whenever it's going on, he said, don't put, your, don't put your mind on nothing what's going on. Put your mind back on me. This is the greatest commandment. This is your authoritative prescription. I'm the great physician. I just gave you a prescription. Focus on me. When you focus on the worry and you go into prayer with worry on your mind, you're killing all the cells, the good and the bad. You're killing all the faith. You're killing worry and faith. But he says, when you put your... When you put all your mind on him and don't focus on nothing else but worshiping him, glorifying him, hyper-focusing on God a million times a day, guess what? The pain is going to disappear. That is your strategy. You're not going to focus on the bad cells. You're only going to feed the good. You're not going to focus on the worry. You're only going to feed the faith. So that the faith gets so big. You know, fear is tricky and it's hoping you don't notice it because the second you start pinpointing your prayer arrow of deliverance on the spirit of fear, you notice when the spirit of fear goes away, you don't even think about it no more. It wasn't the issue. The fruit wasn't that. The root was fear. Y'all, that word was good. I don't know what y'all talking about. I don't know. Hebrew 11, 3. He says, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Or in other words, other words, what we see today wasn't made by things which are visible. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by what? I want you to take out the word world and I want you to put in your situation. Through faith we understand that your marriage is framed by what? Through faith we understand that your health is framed by what? Through faith we understand that your destiny of your children are framed by what? What's the word framed mean? The word framed means to repair something. These are the Hebrew definitions of the word framed. It means to repair something. It means to restore something. Let me say it this way. Through faith, we understand that your marriage is repaired and restored by what? Through faith, we understand that your health was restored and repaired by the... The word framed also means to mend what has been broken. 
Through faith we understand that your marriage has been mended after it was broken by what? By your attitude? By y'all going back and forth all the time? So your spouse don't even necessarily gotta be there, huh? Do faith we understand that your destiny of your children was equipped. Another word for framed is to be equipped. It means to put in order. It means to arrange it or adjust it. So that means that through faith we understand that you can take something in your life and adjust it or arrange it by what? Through faith we understand that uh, another word for frame means to strengthen, means to perfect, means to complete. But two other definitions means to make one what he ought to be. That's what framed means. Through faith we understand that our children were made what they ought to be by what? It also means perfectly joined together. Through faith we understand that you singles who aren't married yet are framed or perfectly joined together by what? Amen. 2 Corinthians 10, 5 says, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. 2 Corinthians 10, 5 says, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. What does casting down mean? It means to throw down, take down with force, demolish, pull down, destroy. Anytime you get an imagination in your mind, immediately out of your mouth, you want to say, I destroy that thought in the name of Jesus Christ. You're a liar. You will not exalt yourself above what I heard God say. You'll never get married. You'll never be a good husband. You'll never be a good wife. I cast you down. You're a liar. Die. Die. Y'all better know how to tell some words in your mind to die. You better learn how to tell some things not to exalt itself above what God said about you. Did he say you were a husband? Did he say you were a wife? So why are you letting your mind tell you different? Cast it down. Every high thing. What is a high thing? It's a thing that's elevated. It's something like a barrier. It's a strong tower. It's a stronghold. It's being protected like a castle is. That thought that has been ingrained in your mind has become a stronghold. That's the high thing that's been exalting itself against God, lifted up with pride. The word imagination here means any reasoning in your mind that is hostile to the Christian faith. Anything in your mind that you've reasoned to be true that's opposite of what God said. Bring it into captivity, which means you want to take it under arrest in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen? You're going to take into arrest every thought, or in other words, a mental perception, an evil purpose, or a device, and you're going to make it bow to the obedience of Christ. Basically, you're taking this thought like a dog and you say, bow. You take its nose and put it in the boo-boo. You understand? There is something coming to this earth. And I'm not saying that to be, I'm saying it because I don't want it to happen. You got to hear me. I don't know how to cook beans. If there is no prayer point, I pray the most. It's please, Lord. Don't let us need these beans. If there's any prophetic word I have ever hoped fall dead to the ground, it's that he told me to get y'all some beans. Dry beans. I don't know what to do with them. And I don't want to find out when it's too late and I really gonna need to learn, you know what I'm saying? But there is something coming. History in the Bible has always shaped and told us that history was always shaped through prayer and fasting. So I do believe we have time to maybe stop it, or if we can't, because God is God, I know we won't be touched. So our guarantee is good no matter what happens. 
I just don't want to go through it. Amen? But I don't have no say. I'm not God. God is God. I've noticed a lot of people online using my sound on TikTok going to the Beyonce concert. It's mockery. And I laugh every time I see it. Not really laugh. I'm going to tell you why I don't. You know how you want to be laughing, but you, don't, you stop your laugh? It's like an inner laugh, but you don't smile. I think everything is funny. So I just be having to stop myself sometimes. The reason why it was an inner laugh, but it wasn't really an outside laugh. Because God won't be mocked. And you saw what happened in Brazil when they mocked God. And you saw what happened in other places where they mocked God. God won't be mocked. So you won't really see me. It's going to be bad. And anybody that mocked with that sound is under judgment. Y'all can say what y'all want. Y'all got God to answer to if he's telling me to say this. Amen. So I want everybody to stand to your feet. I just want to pray some things through. The first prayer point tonight, I just want to pray a prayer of repentance. Repentance is God's mercy. You may have repented earlier today. Let's just do it again for fun. We're going to ask God to forgive us for our sins. Ask God to forgive us for everything that we've done. It could have been gossip. It could have been lying. It could have been anything over-exaggerating, whatever it was, stealing a bad thought. Just open up your mouth and begin to repent. I can't repent for you because I don't know what you did. You can keep your tears. Repentance is about not doing the sin anymore. Now what's a sin to you might not be a sin to somebody else because God might have told you to stay off social media but you've been on it all week. That's a sin, repent. He might have told you to eat certain foods and you didn't stick to it. That's a sin, repent. He might have said to you, I want you to wake up at 3 a.m. to 5 a.m. and I want you to pray with me and you did not do it. That's a sin, repent. He might have told you to cry loud and spare not about a certain situation and you didn't do it. That's a sin, repent. Open up your mouth and begin to repent. I want you to repent now for the sins on your bloodline. Father, in the name of Jesus, we repent for the sin of bestiality. We repent for the sin of rape and molestation. We repent for all sexual immorality, sexual perversion. We repent, Father, for turning away the poor. We repent for laughing in their face, God, and acting like they were nobody. We repent, Father, for being a people who disrespected your altar, who disrespected the pulpit, who desecrated it by preaching one moment and having sex with the congregation the next. Come on, you might not have did it, but your granddaddy did it. Repent on behalf of the bloodline, your grandma, big ma, that played around with her Bible and with a little bit of witchcraft. Father, we repent for being bad stewards over our finances. We repent for adultery. We repent for being covenant breakers in this bloodline. Come on, I don't know what your sin is. I'm just throwing some things out there. We need to repent. Repent for not keeping our children safe. Repent for not keeping our little ones safe. Repent for not being a safe place for them. Repent for sending people to the abortion house. Oh my God, the blood that's on your hands. Repent. Go back in the grave of somebody that died 30 years from now, 30 years ago. 
repent for what they did. Our next prayer point is I want us to go into renunciation. I want you to renounce anything that you're struggling with. If you're struggling with the spirit of fear, I want you to come out of agreement with it. You want to be very specific. What are you afraid of? I want you to list them out. I want you to come out of agreement with it. I want you to renounce it, divorce it, denounce it. Come out of agreement with the covenant you made. Come on, open up your mouth and begin to pray. This is not the time to keep your mouth shut. It's every man for themselves. Father, in the name of Jesus, we renounce this, every blood covenant in the name of Jesus. Every blood covenant of abortions, God, we renounce it. We repent, Father, for shedding the blood to the demon Moloch. We repent for it now in the name of Jesus Christ. We renounce our evil covenant that we made with that deity. We divorce ourselves from it, God. We denounce it in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask, Father, that anything that the enemy had because of a broken contract, any breach of contract that we were going to suffer from because we broke a contract with the devil, we ask for a supernatural pardoning in the realm of the spirit. Pardon us from the punishment of breaking the contract with the devil. Come on, open up your mouth. Father, we renounce all water covenants. Any covenant from the river, God. Playing around with Oshun and Ogun. Playing around, God, with these gods because we're listening and going to the concerts of these people that worship these deities. And we don't even know what we're singing. But even in singing the song, we have entered into an initiation and a ritual. In the name of Jesus, we renounce every water covenant that we made with these gods. We renounce our affiliation with every God of fertility. Every God that promised us a baby. Every God that promised us twins. We renounce it in the name of Jesus. We renounce yoga. We renounce sage burning. We renounce angel nippers, which is another form of tarot cards. Yes, you speak to us in nippers, but angels, we don't have no scripture for that. We renounce it. We come out of agreement with any, any tarot card reading that angel numbers gave us. Whatever they said, Father, we renounce it. We are not even in agreement with it. Come on. We renounce all water covenants in the name of Jesus Christ. Any song of any celebrity that we've sung that initiated us unknowingly into a water covenant, we come out of agreement with it now in the name of Jesus Christ. Any bathing you did with your child because it was tradition in the family, renounce it. It wasn't God. We renounce it now in the name of Jesus. We come out of agreement with it, Father. Whatever needs to service this altar, Father, we break the agreement and we declare that the blood that was purchased on the cross feeds the altar and chokes it dead. Let it fall to the ground and bear no more fruit in our lives. Come on. We renounce all air altars. We announce all air covenants. We renounce all land covenants. In the name of Jesus Christ, any covenant in the air, any covenant with the land that we live in, any blood that was shed on our bloodline, God, and we now live on that land, we renounce it, we come out of agreement with the murders that were done on our land. We break the covenant with it now in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on. Anybody you've been having sex with on your period, break the blood covenant. In the name of Jesus, anybody when you were a child and you pricked the fingers and you said we're blood covenants, break the blood covenant. Father, we renounce, we come out of agreement. With every evil covenant hidden, known or hidden, Father, we ask God in the name of Jesus Christ that any children, any babies, any innocent blood that's crying out from the ground against us, laying accusation against our names, 
Father, we ask that they are silenced now with the blood of Jesus Christ. The Bible says that the blood speaks better things than the blood of Abel. Let the blood silence the cries of those babies that were murdered innocently and that's crying out as judgment against us, Father. Let the blood of Jesus neutralize the cries of those babies in the name of Jesus. The next prayer point is now we're going to replace it with the, with the word of God. So whatever you prayed against, I want you to declare over your body, I am healed. I am married. I am who God says I am. Father, you have rule, reign, and dominion over my life. You have rule, reign, and dominion over my circulatory system. You have rule, reign, and dominion over my skeletal system. You have rule, reign, and dominion over my lymphatic system. You have rule, reign, and dominion over my glandular system. You have rule, reign, and dominion over my cholesterol system. You have rule, reign, and dominion over my white blood cells and my red blood cells. Father, every iniquity that's riding my DNA, you have rule, reign, and dominion over my DNA right now. You know, iniquity can ride the DNA for generations. So you wanna break the hold of iniquity. When you repent, you repented for iniquity, for sin and transgressions. And you can break iniquity off of that DNA of your bloodline. In the name of Jesus, we break iniquity off of our bloodline. Come on, open up your mouth. We break iniquity off of our DNA in the name of Jesus. We break off all iniquity riding on our DNA, all iniquity on the RNA because of the shot. Father, we break it off now in the name of Jesus. Let the blood neutralize the effects of any shot in the name of Jesus. Come on, give God rule, reign, and dominion over everything that pertains to you. God, you give rule, reign, and dominion over my mind. It's yours. It's yours. You got rule, reign, and dominion over my thoughts. You have rule, reign, and dominion, God, over my faith. You have rule, reign, and dominion over my marriage, over my husband, over your wife. You have rule, reign, and dominion over your children. You have rule, reign, and dominion. Come on, give God his power back. Because you took it away from him when you made a covenant with the devil. But say, God, let heaven and earth record today that I am in covenant with you. And by reason of that covenant, Father, I ask that you fight for me. Any spirit of infirmity that came in because of the open door that I opened. The Bible says, agree with your adversary quickly. I agree, God, I was guilty. Whatever they did in my bloodline before I got here, I agree, I'm guilty. I did whatever the enemy said I did, I did it. I pray now because of your mercy and your grace that whatever door I opened up because of my sins or the sins of my ancestors and allow the spirit of infirmity to come in, allow this anti-marriage spirit to come in, allow the spirit to attack your children, your finances, any, your destiny, in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare it now because I am in covenant with you. The spirit is in high treason for, for molesting me, for offending me, for harassing me, for transgressing against me. And I declare divine judgment to come down on it now in the name of Jesus. Then I want you to now to go begin to speak against the spirit of infirmity. I want you to just tell it to go. Tell it to go right into the abyss. Tell it to go into the abyss. Seal it there with the blood of Jesus in the name of Jesus. You foul spirit of infirmity, I command to root yourself out of my body and I command you to be rooted into the abyss. Come on, speak to that thing. It has no more legal right. A lot of this stuff had legal right to be in your life. If you prayed the prayers you just prayed, it doesn't have legal right. Command it to go. Command the madman spirit to come off your children. Command that madman spirit to come off your husband. Command that madman spirit to come off your wife. Father, because I'm now in covenant with you, I ask that you withhold and upstand the guidelines of this covenant and I pray that you fight for me. 
My heart is circumcised. I'm guaranteed the victory. You guys hear me say often, David did not win that fight because of five smooth stones and a slingshot. David won the fight because he was in covenant with God. How do I know he was in covenant? Back then, to be in covenant with God, you needed to be circumcised. That's why he said, you uncircumcised Philistine. He knew that even though this was a giant, he was in a better position because he had a circumcision and he didn't. That means I have covenant. No matter what weapon I choose to throw at you, I already won. What you just did was you circumcised your heart. That means that you are now in covenant with God. That means that you now have to win the fight. You understand? You now can go home and say, uh-uh, go now in the name of Jesus. Get out now. Get out my baby now. Get out my house now. Get out my bloodline now. In the name of Jesus, do they sleep you anointing their forehead? In the name of Jesus, go. You need to find somewhere else to go. This house is inoperable. You can't go. You can't sit here. Our next prayer point, I want to pray and ask God that he continue to humble the proud in the month of June. I want us to make sure that God continues. Don't, God, don't even left your, keep your foot on their neck. And we're going to pray that God keeps us hidden under the secret place of the Most High God, that each and every one of your houses will be a Goshen, that it will not be touched. Father God, in the name of Jesus, come on, lift up your voice. Father, your word says that you give more grace to the humble and that you resist the proud. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we cannot afford for you to resist us as a person. We cannot afford for you to resist our family, our bloodline, and we cannot afford for you to resist our nation. So we are asking in the name of Jesus, in your mercy, that you would continue to humble the proud in the month of June. I pray, Father, that you would bring them low. I pray, Father, that they will fall in their own devices. In the name of Jesus, bring public humiliation to anybody promoting pride. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, lift up your voice. The kingdom of God suffereth violence and the violence taken by force. fear of the Lord come upon your hearts of your people. Let the fear of the Lord hit New York City. Like an arrow of deliverance, we send the fear of the Lord to New York City in the name of Jesus. Not many days henceforth, we will see the fear of the Lord hit that region. In the name of Jesus, let every knee bow and let every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. In the name of Jesus, command the city of New York City to repent. Father, we pray that a great humbling come over that region. We pray that the fear of the Lord would even come upon the unbelievers. Even right here in the city of Atlanta, Georgia. Let the fear of the Lord hit this nation, God. They know better. Most of them came up in church and they play in church now. We have been tolerant and inclusive for way too long. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are the generation that will not tolerate Jezebel. In the name of Jesus, humble this city. Come on, let the fear of the Lord hit this nation. Let the fear of the Lord hit this nation. Let the fear of the Lord hit New York City. Let the fear of the Lord hit Atlanta. God, let the fear of the Lord humble the proud. In Jesus' name, we pray for the humbling to happen over this nation because you give grace to those you have humbled. You will give grace to humility, oh God. Don't let anything happen that makes you stop listening to our voice because we did not war against this spirit of pride. Father, in the name of Jesus, keep your foot on the proud. Father, I pray that you would make an open show. Oh baby, they want a game. 
or they want a playoff, or they want to see a performance. Oh, baby, let this be the halftime. Let this be the halftime of the decade. Let this be the halftime of the decade. You want to see a show? You want to see a performance? The enemy thought that they were going to win against your children? Oh, no. Lift up your head, all oh, ye gates, and be lifted up, you and your body. Father, we pray that you hide us under the secret place of the Most High God. All of us who dwell under the shadow of the Almighty, we ask that you would hide us. Father, even when we see a thousand fall at our side and ten thousand at our right hand, we declare today it shall not come nigh us. It shall not come nigh our house, it shall not come nigh our children, it shall not come nigh our cars, it shall not come nigh our planes, it shall not come nigh our bank accounts, we don't care what we see on the news or on social media, it shall not come nigh us, only with our eyes will we behold and see the reward of the wicked. Father, give, us, give your angels charge over us to keep us from dashing our foot up against a stone. Come on, make a declaration, you're always at the right place at the right time. Come on, this isn't the time to make the wrong turn. This isn't the time to make the wrong turn. This is halftime. The enemy is plotting, baby. God, we declare today that you will not be mocked. I pray as a prophet of God, you will back up my words. Not for the goal for people to fear me, but for the goal of people fearing you. God, bring the fear of the Lord back to this nation again. Bring the fear of the Lord back to this nation again. Not many days henceforth, there will be a humbling so strong that the fear of the Lord will come back to the hearts of his people. God, you look for one man to bridge the gap. We say you have thousands of us in this generation. God, we ask for your mercy. We ask that you will humble this nation and show us grace. The next prayer point, I want you to ask God to make you a wildfire. No more sitting on the sidelines doing nothing. No more being quiet and being nosy, rubbing your ashy feet together in bed while you scrolling on your timeline, watching me fight the good fight of faith on Facebook and you... Come on, pray and ask God to make you a wildfire. Father, we thank you for the fire of God. We pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that before you make us a wall fire, you are a wall of fire round about us. Father, let the wrath of God surround us. Let the anger of God surround us with the fire of the Lord. That anytime somebody lifts up their tongue against us, they are burnt by the wrath of God in the name of Jesus. Father, set us forth like your polished arrows. Set us forth like your glittering swords. Come on, God said he made you a battle axe. God made you a battle axe for this generation. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would make each and everybody watching in person and online a wildfire for you. God, I pray that they will see themselves in the realm of the spirit ablaze with the fire of God. I pray that as they leave their houses, whatever region they live in, as they're walking, they see themselves as the fire of God. I pray that anybody that comes near them is consumed with the fire of God. I declare that anybody comes in contact with you, baby, they won't leave the same because they've been touched by the fire of God. I pray that no matter where you live, this fire of God will go a thousand miles away and touch a region, a country, a nation you'll never step foot in. Come on, I want you to pray on that. Keep the music down because they like to use the music as a crutch. No music. This place should be roaring. It's not loud enough. It's not loud enough. Y'all too cute. The devil is after your children. The devil is after your city. The devil is doing biochemical warfare right now. You're too quiet. 
way too quiet. I need a roar that's gonna shake. I need a roar that's gonna make the earth quake. Come on, don't get tired out. Come on, God, make us your wildfires. Set us forth like polished arrows. We've been sitting in your quiver, God. Launch us forth in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, fire of God, hit our lives. Illuminate us, oh God. Illuminate us, Father. Light us up, God. Ye kapatul, ribeke pe, ye katate, ye kapai, u ribeke pe, roar. Light us up, God. Come on, you're the burning ones. Light us up, God. You're the burning ones. You're not afraid of them, they're afraid of you. When they look at you, they see a cloud of smoke. Come on, I'm on fire. I'm on fire. Set me on fire. Anything that touched me get burnt by the fire of God. Anything that come close to me is consumed by the fire of God. Come on. The particles of my prayer life goes into regions I've never been in. Pray! Ye paso Rebecca Pai. Ye ketetela da basu Rebecca Pai. Come on, I need you to see the fire igniting in your feet. Everywhere that your feet shall tread. Come on, I need to see, I need you to see the fire of God. I need you to see the flame of deliverance on your feet. Wherever God sends you, you'll set it on fire. I want you to get a map and begin to walk on a map. And I want you to declare every region you step in while you're praying. The fire of God sets that nation on fire. Come on, baby, look at your hands. I want you to declare everything you touch, everything you touch. Everything you touch is healed by the fire of God. Every impurity in anybody's body, including your own, you lay hands on it, it is purified by the fire of God. It is dissolved by the fire of God. It is burnt to smithereens by the fire of God. Come on, I need you to see your hands as flames. I need you to see your hands as flames as fire. Come on, I need you to feel the heat of the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost begin to warm up their hands, begin to make their hands burn, begin to make them feel the heat of your flame, oh God. Your hands are hands of deliverance. Pray. Come on, God has made your mouth a sword. When you open up your mouth, the sword of God comes out. But I see a flaming sword, a sword of flaming fire. Every time you open up your mouth, I see the sword piercing through anything that shouldn't have been there. Come on, pray. Make your mouth an arrow of deliverance. Set your mouth on fire. Anything that's not godly in your mouth, God, crucify it. Burn it away. Sanctify it. Purify it. Come on, make my mouth a mouth of fire. In the name of Jesus, Rebecca Pai, give me tongues of fire. Come on, give me tongues of fire. Yetante Nekabanzo, Rebecca Pai. Every time I pray in the Holy Ghost, something happens. Every time I pray in the Holy Ghost, I see deliverance. Every time I pray in the Holy Ghost, I see healing. Every time I pray in the Holy Ghost, I see transformation. Pray. Roar.
Come on, the health of this nation is depending on this prayer. The health of your bloodline is depending on this prayer. Come on, rekatai. It doesn't matter what your tongue sound like. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Roar! Come on, ask God to set that heart of yours on fire. Some of your hearts are stony. Set your heart on fire. God, don't let me lose my heart. Come on, make your heart pliable. Don't make it a heart of stone. Set my heart on fire. Anything that's impure in my heart, God, burn it away. Funny how the fire fixes you before it goes outward. God, anything in me, purify it. Anything in me, purify it. Anything in my heart, God, from betrayal, from hurt, that it caused me to have a calloused heart, purify my heart, God. Let the fire of God surround my heart, oh God. Come on, set your kids ablaze with the fire of God right now. If you don't have kids, just you're gonna have, you're gonna have some one day. Pray over your niece. Father, in the name of Jesus, we declare that our children have the fire of God around them. We pray, God, that your hand is on them and you turn them every way but loose. We ask that our children have an encounter with you, God, that they'll never forget even at this age. Father, in the name of Jesus, just like the witches and warlocks are raising their babies up, we repent for not teaching our children the ways of God. We repent for giving our children options to go to church or not. We repent, Father, for not opening up our Bibles and not teaching them the Word of God at home. Forgive us, God. And we ask in your mercy, God, that you are a wall of fire around our kids. Come on, don't lean on me. The next prayer point, I want us to pray that God causes the false prophets to lose their influence. That's just it. If they're child molesters to a body, we should all want that, right? So go ahead and lift up your voice and begin to pray that prayer. God, we don't care who they are. We ask that any false prophet in this generation that has gained traction both in the natural and in the realm of the spirit, we ask God that they would lose their influence this month in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask, Father, that you would partner with us, your chosen ones, your people, your intercessors, your watchmen. And we declare, Father, that if you consider this the child molesters to your body, you must want us to intercede about it. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we shut their influence down now. Father, I pray that you would wake everybody up. Come on, begin to declare that people, body, the body of Christ is woken up out of their spiritual slumber. Y'all should be sounding like an alarm clock right now. Wake up! Wake up! Wake up! Wake up! Sleeping soldiers, wake up! Wake up! The next prayer point, I want you to pray and ask God to reveal to you if you have any accursed things in your house or people around you that you shouldn't be. I pray and ask that God reveals it to you within the next seven days. So let's go ahead and pray that prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we have been saved 
We are living in right standing with you. We're doing everything that you've called us to do. We are faithful to you, God, and we ask in the name of Jesus that you would, there's something not quite right. There's something that's not quite right. And we ask, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, that you would reveal to us any person or thing that is an accursed thing over our life or our bloodline so that we can get it plucked out in the name of Jesus. Father, anything that has been hidden from us, anything that we refuse to see the truth of, let the scales come off of our eyes today in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray, God, that the spiritual cataracts is done with destroyed in the name of Jesus. Let us see with 2010 vision in the realm of the spirit and in the natural God. When you show us who or what it is, even if it's a family thing that has been in the family for a hundred years, you have our word that we will throw it away. If it's a relationship that you've shown us and this person was sent by the enemy, but they have been very nice and ain't did nothing to us. God, in the name of Jesus Christ, what we promise you is that we'll get rid of them. And the last prayer point I want us to pray is the arrow of deliverance. I just want you to pray over the arrow of deliverance. The arrows get sent wherever you send them. But I want you to open up your mouth and begin to declare arrows of deliverance over your body, over your life, over your house. Arrows of deliverance over your children, over your marriage, over your finances. Arrows of deliverance over the media and this trans movement and this trans going on with all of these children. Send the arrows of deliverance to your children's schools. Send the arrows of deliverance to social media. Let's get this thing turned around. They are, too, they are much louder than Christians are and it's a shame. So we're praying that the, the arrows of deliverance go into TikTok. The arrows of deliverance you go into Instagram. The arrows of deliverance you go into YouTube. The arrows of deliverance you go to Twitter. The arrows of deliverance you get into CNN and Fox News. The arrows of deliverance you begin to get on talk shows with the white people because apparently y'all only listen to people when they white people. The arrows of deliverance. Let's open up our mouth and begin to pray. of Jesus we ask that your arrows of deliverance hit the White House in Jesus name let the arrows of deliverance hit the White House we don't know what that looks like but that's none of our business let the arrows of deliverance hit the White House come on let the arrows of deliverance hit whatever hospital room your loved one is in 
Let the arrow of deliverance hit their hospital room now. Let the arrow of deliverance hit the unbelievers. Let the arrows of deliverance hit these politicians. Let the arrow of deliverance hit these social media influencers. I just, I just saw a vision. It's, it's the most random vision in the world, but I saw a vision of fireflies everywhere. And while I was praying to the Holy Ghost, I was said to God, not only do I not think about fireflies, I just realized how much I don't see any fireflies. And I heard the Lord saying that all of these people watching online and in here are the fireflies. You'll be noticed. You remember, do you remember what, seeing fireflies when you were younger? My God, I see it. You will not be able to remain hidden. You will not be able to remain hidden. The only warning I have for you is if you're going to be loud on social media, you have to be in right standing with God. You can't live a life of sin doing what I do. The enemy is waiting for an open door. Even when I get done arguing with y'all on social media, I go back and repent for it. He can't have no open door to your life. So if you, there is a man on social media, prophet. He was uh, exposing all of the false prophets that are really big over in Africa. He was initiated with them, so he knew a lot of secrets. He amassed a large following and then went to the hospital. His body was attacked. And I don't know what happened, but he came back to YouTube and said, hey guys, don't listen to anything I said. All of it was fake. Thankfully, he had some real believers that watched and said, nah, bro, I know you was telling the truth and I know you got to say this because they scared you. But likely there was somewhere where he wasn't living in right standing with God. He had an open door to be able to get attacked for somebody at such a high level. And so there is no need for you to be afraid. I, I, I know quite a few people that worked very high up in that world. And one person that used to be very high up in the voodoo world said that they fasted and prayed all the time. I, the person prays all the time now. And I'm like, where did you learn that from? He said when he was uh, studying to be a high priest voodoo. And he said their only assignment was to fast and pray against churches. And he said they would, they would come together, fast and pray, and just the churches would go down. And I, so I got a little discouraged and I said, well, how did, are you, so everybody going to go down with voodoo? Because you know people think that. And he goes, no, we could never touch the church that had a real praying life. He said, anybody that had a real praying life, they couldn't touch the church or the pastor. He said, and then it would tire them out and they would say, this is a waste of time. Let's just go to an easier target. This is why we fast all the time. This is not religious exercise. We fast all the time to make sure that our flesh is dead. We fast all the time to make sure any unforgiveness in our heart is done with. We don't want any open door to the enemy. 
anything that you did in secret we want no open door to the enemy God is going to use you in this hour to come against systems and structures you're going to be graced to do it you're a nobody right now nobody knows your name there's been men on social media saying well why you don't call them out and I'm like why you don't call them out I'm a woman and I'm not lowering myself down, but what I'm saying is, is you're the man. Why don't you do it? Why you want me to do your dirty work? Some of y'all been saying me, seeing me say that. Because you're not going to punk me in the sink doing nothing you won't do. And you a man. Shouldn't you want to cover and protect me? Y'all screaming out where you're covering at? Where? You call them out in your comments. And the person said, well, you're the one with the large following. Yeah, I started when I had two. I was talking pure trash with three followers. I would log on the next day and talk more trash with eight followers. I would log on three days later and talk more trash with 12 followers. Because everybody starts at zero. So you not having any followers is not an excuse for you not to get started. I used to be in the world and you know sometimes when you, they know you to for, for fighting and you not no fighter, they'll come over to you and be like, so-and-so messing with me. And I'm like, okay, you need to go fight your own battles. That's not my fight. I'm not getting into that. And you start keep talking drunk in front of me, I'm going to walk away and you're going to get jumped by yourself because I'm not helping. And that's how some of you are. There was a woman prophet that came to me from Clubhouse and she said, there's a false prophet over there stealing everybody's money. I'm telling you because I think you should say something about it. First of all, I don't even have Clubhouse. And I said, what cowards. What a generation of cowards. But you won't be named among them. You won't be named among these cowards in this generation. They will try to intimidate you. They're going to try to bully you. They're going to try to tell you what it says in the Bible and it don't really be saying that in the Bible. I need you to set your face like a flint and understand that you're not fighting people to people. You're fighting so that what happened to Joshua won't happen to this nation. So every time you fight, the enemy wants to draw you in to you hate gays, you hate LGBTQ, you hate all of these people. Don't fall for that. You are fighting so that the accursed thing doesn't happen to this nation and that God humbles the proud so that he gives us grace in our time of need. That is your only focus. Don't let them draw you into another fight. The fruit of the fight looks like the trans movement with the children and all of that stuff. That's not the real fight. The enemy wants to trick you with that. The real fight is the root of it, which is the accursed thing and the spirit of pride, which is going to make God resist us. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for today. We thank you that the spirit of fear that was on your people to cry loud and spare not, God, has been destroyed in the name of Jesus. We ask, Father, that the fire of God come upon your people. And we ask that everybody that comes into contact with us knows that we have been in the presence with the Lord. Father, we pray that we carry the anointing that transforms because wherever the presence of God is, he transforms and whatever the enemy is, he transgenders. Father, in the name of Jesus, let us carry an oil on us that transforms this generation. I make a declaration as your prophet to declare, God, that this is the generation that will seek your face. This is a generation that will fast and pray, God, to see your kingdom come on this earth. Father, I pray that every watchman in here wake up and get back on their watch. I pray that the spirit of prayer and intercession hits their lives, God, and they no longer sleep on their assignment, but they wake up as soon as they hear your voice. God, I pray that they would devour the book of Ezekiel to see what their assignment is. God, let every prophet that's been hurt heal them so that they can operate in their assignment, God, with excellence. I pray, God, that we don't fear the faces of men. We don't fear the faces of leaders. And we don't have demonic honor which is really idolatry. God, teach us how to honor in a godly way and keep us far from idolatry. Father, in the name of Jesus, we destroy every idol in our life. Everything that we prioritized above your word, God, we destroy it today. Let every idol in our heart die. We can't afford, God, to be far from you. We can't afford to get it wrong in this hour, God. You have said, not through the mouth, the mouth of this prophet, but you have said through the mouth of many prophets, something worse is coming. Hide us. 
deliver us speak to us and tell us what to buy what to get where to go and give us the provision to live in it father i pray that the blood of jesus flows to the foundation of our systems our children our finances our bank accounts let it flow to the foundation of everything that pertains to us god and let it purify and protect us from whatever is coming in the name of jesus let it be as if we don't even feel it coming because it has nothing to do with us we just see it with our own eyes Father, lastly, I pray that the spirit of distraction is off of your people. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Your word says that a double-minded man or woman is unstable in all of their ways. I pray, Father, that the spirit of mania and psychosis and mental illness that came from being double-minded is broken off of us.